My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of The Majestic. Now I love The Green Mile, Shawshank Redemption and The Mist. I'm a big fan of Frank Duobont as a director and I've always found it to be a shame that he's never made more movies than he has. But this has always been my biggest blind spot by him. I've heard some people absolutely love this movie, I've heard some people don't care for it at all, and I was very curious to see where I'd land on it, and unfortunately, I'm on the more negative sides of things because I do not find this to be a good movie at all. But let's begin talking about the performances, first with Jim Carrey, and I think he does a good job in this movie. I don't think he's as good as people say. I think there's this certain mindset that when a comedic actor does a dramatic performance, people tend to overhype it more than they should. And sometimes it's warranted. Like, I legitimately believe Jim Carrey should have won an Oscar for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That is his best performance. But if you look at his performance in Dumb and Dumber, I think it's also pitch perfect at what that movie needed it to be, and I still think that's a fantastic performance as well. So I do think people over rate his performance just a little bit, but he still does a very good job. I actually think the best performance in this movie is Martin Landau. I think this guy is such a talented actor and it really shines here. He just comes across as the most genuine guy and I think his performance elevates this character. You've also got Laurie Horden, who I just found to be very lacking as a love interest. I never cared for her at all, I found her to be very bland. And the rest of the cast does a perfectly fine job. Very few standouts, but no one does a terrible job or anything. One performance that actually did stand out to me is that when he's watching the movie early on, and I'm just like, is that Bruce Campbell? Oh, that's Bruce Campbell. That's awesome. I love seeing Bruce Campbell. Like, they just, perfect casting for a very short cameo. But I think my biggest issue with this movie is that it is a perfectly fine overly sentimental 90 minute long movie that's stuck in this two and a half hour long bloated mess of a movie and it's just way, way too long. I always say that the longer the movie is, the harder I'm going to be on it and that is the case here. There is no justification for this length with this movie. And I also found that despite the long one time, some things could have been developed better. Like, I thought Jim Carrey's life at the very beginning, when it's all great and perfect and then it takes a 180 and now is bad and miserable, I thought that 180 felt very jarring. I felt like they could have had a better setup to the rest of the movie. And then also, Harry being sick and dying just felt like it came out of nowhere. Like, maybe, I was really tired last night, so maybe I missed a few small moments where he would cough and nobody was looking, but I don't remember any. And it's just like you could have built up to that a bit better so it doesn't feel like it's coming out of nowhere. I also thought, like, along with the links, that the other big issue with this movie is that the entire communist plot was just so unneeded. To the point where it feels like two very different movies. Like, you got one about this guy who's in Hollywood, who's successful, who gets into an accident and wakes up in the town where he has no memory of who he is and everybody confuses him as this long lost son. But then you've also got this other plot about the rise of communist panic in the 50s and the two just don't mesh together. It feels like very two very distinct movies. And that said, one of my favorite things that movies do every now and again is when there is two different movies in one movie. Like, I love The World's End. That is a top 10 movie of all time for me. I love From Dusk Till Dawn. I love it when it's done in other movies. It can be handled incredibly effectively. But here, it just felt like a mess and I just could not care less about this whole communist plot. And it doesn't help. That's the plot the movie ends on. So it goes out with a whimple. I will say that this movie is well shot. The Seeing where they're actually cleaning up the theater, I find to be very satisfying. I just love stuff like that. Like, I enjoy the movie The Money Pit a lot more than most people because it's just so satisfying to see people clean up a gross, dirty building and make it look new. And I love the way the sign looks. It's just very bright and colorful. 
I will say that there is some very bad CGI here. Like, there was a scene where uh, Jim Carrey is talking to Lori Horton's character at a lighthouse, and the CGI, the green screen, is very obvious. But look, this movie just didn't do it for me. I think there is a good movie here about hope in bad times, and the importance of community, and nostalgia. Dodger and how that can be very important after the world has gone through some truly terrible stuff While also being nostalgic for movies of the past I think this movie could have been a really effective if they just kept it simple and focused on those ideas and focused on the story of Jim Carrey being mistaken for the son You know the scene where Martin Landor dies thinking that his son came home is the most powerful scene in the movie. But just everything else surrounding it I found to be a complete disaster. It is far too long and there's no justification for it. Like it is one hour too long, without a doubt. The communist plot I couldn't care less about. And it's just stuff like that that really bogs this movie down. I think the performances are good, but the movie as a whole is just very lacking. So I'm going to go ahead and give The Majestic a 3.5 out of 10. One thing I noticed about this movie though is that the bar Jim Carrey gets drunk at early on is named Coco Bongo. And if my memory serves correctly, that is the same name as a club as The Mask. So is this The Mask Majestic Cinematic Universe? Maybe, but anyways, have you seen The Majestic? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.